After taking a pass on samples from a mega ripple, Perseverance has moved on to wetter pastures, or at least rocks that once were soaked in water. The latest images expose evidence of the briny conditions in ancient Lake Jezero on this episode of Mars Guy. We last left Perseverance poking around in a trench it made in an armored sand dune known as a mega ripple, where it exposed and then buried a tiny gem. Rather than collecting a sample as planned, Perseverance has moved on for unknown reasons, driving 208 meters in a single saw. The new target was a band of rocks that looks similar to the Bacon Strip, the nickname for the band of mudstones first explored by Perseverance back in June. Feel free to suggest their genre. Here's the view looking back over the tracks of that drive, and here's Mars Guy for scale. You can see how Perseverance managed to stay in its lane, avoiding the ripples, which have caused trouble in the past, as I presented in episode 74. The drive ended among small patches of light-toned fractured bedrock, including this piece. Its spine of knobby material was strange enough to warrant further inspection, including zaps from Supercam's laser, which cleared away dust in these spots. The Watson camera took a close-up look, revealing a chunky and porous character that is not typical of the gypsum veins that were observed back in the Bacon Strip, and at two other rover sites on Mars. The slab that hosts the spine is too small to fit the drill stabilizers, so more investigations were not possible. Instead, Perseverance needed to bump to nearby outcrops to provide large enough surfaces to work on, which also provided clues to the strange material. Perseverance lined up on this fractured slab, which provides plenty of real estate for the drill. Watson was deployed according to protocol to inspect the surface before doing an abrasion operation. It showed fracture filling veins and also knobby bits not in the fractures, neither of which has the strange look of the knobby spine, but probably were produced from a similar process. The abrasion operation worked perfectly avoiding crushing the rock like on the bacon strip and leaving behind one of the smoothest surfaces yet produced. The knobby bits at the surface turn out to be bright white on the inside, a clue to their mineralogy. Salts like halite, which you put on food, and gypsum, which is in your drywall, typically are bright white. Calcite, a carbonate salt, also is bright white. All can form in evaporative playas on Earth, growing in mud. Because mud is malleable, salt can displace the mud as it grows, so it makes its own space. Displacive growth of salts in mud means they can grow either in existing fractures or in between them. That's what appears to be happening with the minerals observed by Perseverance. A clue that gypsum is involved comes from the tiny gem I showed in the previous episode. Notably similar, prismatic gypsum is known to form from briny fluids in evaporative settings where these well-formed crystals grow by displacing mud. The tiny gem in the mega ripple trench likely is gypsum that grew up in the muds of early Lake Jezero and left after they turned to stone and were eroded by wind and sand and time. 